In this presentation I want to talk some more about the latent change score model. In a previous video I introduced the idea of reformulating a longitudinal confirmatory factor model into a latent change score model and so if you're not yet familiar with this idea then I suggest that you take a look at this previous video first in which I explained how that works and provided some references also in the description. Here I want to follow up on this latent change score model and I want to show you how you can make it a little bit easier to specify in structural equation modeling software than the version of the model that I presented initially. So initially I presented this idea where you can reformulate a latent variable tau2 that corresponds to a time point 2 into the previous latent variable tau1 plus change. And so then you obtain a model that looks like this, a longitudinal confirmatory factor analysis model where you have the true score variable or latent factor at time 1 and then the latent factor for the same construct again at time 2 and the change score variable in the model that directly expresses inter-individual differences in changes over time. Now this model can be a little bit tricky to specify when you apply it in structural equation modeling software such as M plus because this latent variable tau2 minus tau1 is kind of like a phantom variable. It's not directly linked to observed variables and programs like for example M plus require you to specify a measurement model when you introduce latent variables where the latent variables are connected to observed or manifest variables. So here this would be the y variables in the boxes at the bottom and you can see that the latent difference score variable or latent change score variable tau2 minus tau1 is not directly linked to any observed variables. And so how do you then get this variable into the model? In M plus for example you'd have to say a latent variable is measured by indicators, but tau2 minus tau1 is not measured by any indicators, right? So how do you get this model into, or this latent variable into the model? Now there is a trick to do that in M plus, for example, in other programs, but um, that's relatively complicated. And so here I want to show you a um, way that's maybe easier, where you can reformulate this model again into um, a model that is also equivalent to this model, so provides the exact same results, but that is easier to specify in structural equation modeling software. How do we do that? We can do that by combining the structural equation that we have here with the measurement equation. Now what does the measurement equation look like in this model? It looks like this, where we have a manifest variable yit, where i indicates the item or indicator and t indicates the time point or measurement occasion, is equal to an intercept alpha i, so that's an additive constant. Notice that alpha i doesn't have an index t because it's assumed to be time invariant for strong measurement equivalence or measurement invariance across time, plus a loading lambda i, also no index for the time point because lambda is also assumed to be time invariant times the latent factor tau t, the latent variable at time point t, plus a variable and time specific measurement error variable epsilon i t. So that's our measurement equation and so if we want to connect this latent change score variable tau 2 minus tau 1 with the observed variables we can combine this structural equation here with the measurement equation and I'm going to show you this now how this works. So here again we have our structural equation and now we can insert what we have for tau2 here into the measurement equation for the manifest variables that are measured at time 2. So that would be yi2 is equal to again um, a time invariant intercept alpha i plus a time invariant factor loading lambda i times tau 2 plus epsilon i 2. And so I can now replace what I have in the above equation for tau 2 here for tau 2 in the measurement equation. And that way I'm combining those two equations into one. And then I have a measurement model that directly links the observed variables to the latent change score variables as we will see. So then what we get is this. Um, y i2 is equal to alpha i plus lambda i times tau, two, tau 1 plus tau 2 minus tau 1 plus epsilon i2 and then we can, um, we can um, expand that 
and then we get y i2 is equal to alpha i plus lambda i tau 1 plus lambda i tau 2 minus tau 1 plus epsilon i2. Notice that the lambda is the same. So the loading of that variable, of any variable at time 2, is the same on tau 1 as it is on tau 2 minus tau 1. So that has to be the same factor loading. That's very important because those constraints have to be implemented when you set up this model. Otherwise, the model is not correctly specified. So take that into account. That follows from this equation here mathematically that this has to be the same factor loading on the initial factor and on the change score factor. Now, what does this model look like when we now depict it as a path diagram? And that will show you then that this model is maybe a little bit easier to specify in programs for confirmatory factor analysis and structure equation modeling such as M+. So when we implement our measurement equation in the path diagram, then the path diagram looks like this, where now you can see that the indicators at time two have double loadings. They load now on both the initial factor and on the change score factor with the exact same loadings. So these loadings are not only time invariant, but they're also the same on the initial factor as they are on the change score factor. And that follows from this equation because we have the same lambda i here in this measurement equation. And so with this combined equation, we now have a model that we can set up very easily in programs like M plus because we can now say that these indicators are measured by, or these factors, tau one is measured by um, certain variables, and then also tau two minus tau one is measured by. And, and then it's very easy to set it up like this. You don't have to bother with both measurement equations and structural equations because this is a combined equation that has both the measurement portion and the structural portion in it. You get the same parameters because you still, you're still estimating the mean and variance of the initial state factor as before. You're estimating the mean and variance of the change score factor as before, and you're estimating the covariance or correlation between the two. And that's the exact same parameters that you got from the previous parameterization. You will also get the same degrees of freedom and you'll get the same model fit provided that you're specifying the model correctly because it's an equivalent model. We did not change the model implied covariance or mean structure. It's the exact same model. It's just a reformulation, an alternative way to depict this model. I hope you found this uh, video helpful for your own analysis of analyses of longitudinal data and analyses of change across time. Um, feel free to Subscribe to this channel if you are more interested or if you're interested in more videos. Also, you can leave a comment in the comment section and let me know what else you would like to see discussed. In this, the description, you also find links to other um, videos and other workshops that I give on longitudinal data and other types of statistical analyses. I'll see you next time.